Good evening and a very warm welcome to Central London. Guys, later in this video, I'm going to be flying with British Airways in their club suites through to Tokyo. I featured it 18 or so months ago on the channel. That was way back during the COVID service. And frankly, with the whole one tray service, the service just didn't match up to the onboard seating experience. Tonight, we're going to be doing it properly all the way over to Tokyo. As I say, it's going to be a 14 or so hour flight, so plenty of time to really get into it. So in the next scene, you'll see me checking in. So let's head on and do it together. For my overseas viewers, that spot just there was the London Eye. If you're yet to check out Central London, it really is a fantastic place to go and check out. And it was nice to be able to film the intro of this video just there. It's mornings like that one on that particular day that almost makes me feel a little bit sad to be leaving. Quick note as we go to check in just here, the usual business class check-in zones at Terminal 5 has actually been moved to the opposite end of the terminal, so it's now on the far left as you look at the terminal. So I made my way over there, dodging some of the more recent acquisitions at Terminal 5, and there's then a couple of zones to choose from. Firstly, you've got the automated check-in zones. On that particular morning, there were more check-in areas than there were even people waiting to use them. So it's wonderfully efficient. By the time that I got my bag tag printed, there was no time at all before that was then fixed up and the bag was then on its way to Tokyo. Really nice and easy. If you're looking for more of a human touch, if you step off to the left-hand side of the automated area, you've then got those mad check-in desks as well. From there, be it priority security, right the way through to the lounge, things flow really nicely indeed. That lounge that was shown just there was actually the north side lounge. If you're after a shower, that would indeed be the one that I'd recommend using. It's been some time, however, since I featured the south side lounges on the channel, so I thought it'd be a good idea on that particular morning to check it out. Ultimately, however, if you are deciding which lounge is best to use, those boards, similar to the one that I just featured, can be a nice way of getting an overview of the levels of busyness across the lounges themselves. As I step through into the lounge, it was fairly standard lounge offerings in terms of the food front. I must say, for my money, the breakfast service has got to be the best service throughout the entire day. There was a good selection of cold and warmer options available. There was then also your usual range of areas of help yourself drinks machine, be it alcoholic or non-alcoholic options. Good smattering as well, of those all important TV screens across the lounge. You can keep up to date with exactly where your flight's going out. I was particularly impressed also by this Prosecco display just here. Overall, no major changes to report since my last visit to the Southside lounges. That said, there were some new seating options. It was quite nice to see a replacement of some of the seats in the lounges. Tricky filming the capacity and overall usage of the lounges does seem to be really quite high at the moment, but I do get into one of those seats, which I'll show you in just a moment. In terms of the toilets, this is probably the area that needs the most work from British Airways. They're these very private units, but have this very prefabby kind of feel to them. They do have some nice toilets toiletries and little lotions and potions to be used but it would be nice to see these updated as i say here's these brand new seats and they did look superb and the views out as ever looked fab Alrighty, so that's the lounge done busy but not unusable it's just a gate today so not much of a walk down so let's head on down and then we'll jump on board just say just before we do so guys this is a great opportunity to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so i've got so much from british airways and so many other airlines on the channel so hit that subscribe button now and you'll be kept up to date with all the developments of the channel now, although it was technically a gates on that particular day, I was slightly thrown a bit of a curveball because it was going to be gates A10, which then splits into a subset of different remote gates. The journey on that particular day was quite enjoyable. It was a separate bus for first and business class passengers. They did cram people in though, I must say, but the views out were very rewarding and it was great to rock up at what was a freshly painted 777 and on boarding to check out the club suites. I was flying on the 777-300 on that particular day, and it's well worth pointing out that in terms of the business class, it's an incredibly high number of seats. It's actually split down into three cabins. So as my recommendation, I would try and go for those three rows right at the very front. They're just behind the first class, nice proximity to the toilets and also the club kitchen that will cover off. However, all seats laid out in a fantastic one-to-one -one configuration. This really is a nice move on from BA's outgoing Club World product and it was great to get on board and start checking out my window seat on that particular day. I was in 9K. 
Now, as I maneuver myself into the suite, one feature that you'll see just here is actually the sliding door. We'll check that out a little bit later in the flight as that becomes unlocked by the crew, but that is certainly a standout feature of this particular cabin. One of the really big features that I think everyone was looking for as part of the new design was far more storage. If you read the comments on any of my previous videos on the outgoing club world, one thing that people always go really heavy on, and rightly, is the lack of storage. There's an awful lot in this particular cabin, three separate compartments for you just across the top, also a mirror as we showed just a moment ago. In this main compartment just here, got a plethora of different charging options and also the controls just there for the entertainment screen. Overall, a big upgrade on this front versus the outgoing product. Beyond another little cubby, ideal for the headphones as I stored them just down there. On that side panel, you've also then got the main controls for the seat itself. Nice and simple and easy to use. There's not too many positions going on, but there's a range of different positions that you can quite easily get into. And also some of the controls here to dim that side light, which we'll check out in just a moment as well. Before we even push back, the drinks were flowing. I opted for a glass of the champagne on that particular morning. And it went down very well indeed. As mentioned, here's the little side light that you can pop out at any time, and it can also then be dimmed using that side panel. So we're still through the same off, but the menus have come around uh, just now. So we'll take a quick look at that, see what the lights are in store for us. I think it'll be the lunch service just first, and then probably moving on to some sort of dinner or maybe even breakfast before we move in Tokyo. But anyway. Let's check that one out together. Uh, the uh, grape juice, uh, as Paul Stewart would uh, we'll call it, is going down very nicely indeed. But looking forward to pushing back and uh, taking off and getting on our way to Tokyo. The menu kicks off with an overview of the cocktails and mocktails on offer and a few of the spirit offerings. When it comes to the wine, they're actually on the flip side and we'll check those out in just a moment. Turning over the page, as I alluded to in the clip just a moment ago, you have the lunch and dinner service. It was going to be the first service on that particular day, followed the next morning by a full breakfast service. Just on that flip side, as mentioned, you've got the wines, port selection, and then also a champagne overview for you just there. Before we push back, one final feature to show you is then the ability to raise and lower the armrest. It does make it that much easier to get in and out of the seat during meal times. Now with an incredibly heavy 777, all set for the trip over to Tokyo, I'm gonna dim the music and let you fully enjoy the fantastic sound of these two engines coming up to somewhere near full whack as we depart London's Heathrow. pleased to report that the good weather persisted for the takeoff and it did make the climb out of London that bit extra special on that particular morning. In no time at all, the crew were really busy throughout the cabin, kicking off the service, taking on orders for the food and also getting some nice hot towels round to the guests. As I took in some stunning views across the English Channel, it was a good time for me to jump straight into the entertainment and we'll start with that today as part of our onboard review. First up, well, it's the screen. It's a really decent size, nice proximity straight in front of you, and it does give a really enhanced viewing experience, particularly when compared to a range of other business class products. It can be controlled via touchscreen or indeed on the little control panel that you can take out just to the side. It's standard fair in terms of BA High Life Entertainment. I think they do a really decent system with a good selection of movies and also TV shows as well. Slight watch out on this screen. It was a little bit slow to get going, but once it did, the touchscreen functionality worked very nicely indeed. As part of the High Life Entertainment System, there's a really decent integrated world mapping service. This was then to be our route on that particular day, so we were going to go eastbound over to Tokyo, skirting south of the Russian border, which added quite a lot of additional hours. It was around 14 hours or so total on board, really quite a long flight. Twins with the entertainment system is then this pair of headphones. Decent quality, I have to say not the best I've experienced in business class, but certainly pretty decent all around. 
in this day and age, Wi-Fi is becoming that much more important, particularly on a flight of this length. There's a couple of different packages you can go for. It's either messaging only or browse and stream. As you then click into them, you've then got the ability to do a shorter option or indeed a full flight pass. I opted for the browse and stream on that particular day and went for the entire flight pass and it worked fairly nicely indeed. Just before the main service started, it gave me a quick time to jump up and check out the bathrooms. These were a little bit larger on this particular aircraft, so that was good to see. I think BA could do a little bit more here to make them that bit more special in the business class, but overall nice and clean throughout the flight, and it was a pretty decent experience. Upon returning back to the seat, I had my gin and tonic waiting for me, which looked absolutely superb on these nice little new service trays they're using. Lovely glassware, and that was a good start to the service, I must say. As you get into the cruise, the crew then come round and unlock the doors so you can slide those across and enjoy even greater levels of privacy. I was then into the lunch service. I opted for the goat's cheese salad as part of my starter. Slightly odd presentation with much of it hiding under those lettuce leaves, but it was a nice way to start. That was then washed down as well with a glass of the Sauvignon Blanc. For my main course, I opted for the pork loin, which was quite a nice little winter warmer. This was then accompanied with an incredibly generous glass of the Pinot Noir. This was very earthy, and overall, both of the wines, I have to say, went down very nicely indeed, and were very generously topped up throughout the flight. As afternoon was very quickly turning to evening, I opted for the Godiva Crunchy Chocolate Bar Dessert, which I have to say is one of the best desserts that BA have offered in quite some time. As we made our way across Eastern Europe, the sun started to set and the views out were absolutely stunning. It's views like this that make this project even the more worth it. Frankly, I could bring these views to you very happily for absolutely hours. It really was breathtaking. With thoughts starting to turn to getting some rest, it was then a good time to jump into the amenity kit. BA continued their partnership with the White Company. I've always been a big fan of the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this works, I think, very nicely for them indeed. The amenity kit had all of the usual little lotions and potions you'd expect. Big fan, personally, of the eye mask. And the crew even came around with some chocolates to finish off the evening, which I, of course, paired with some Baileys when in Rome, of course, do as the Romans do. It was then time to start getting the bed into position, which I I then aptly did just using the seat controls and hey presto the bed was then made up and it was very comfortable I have to say. Now as I pan the camera around just here one thing that you will notice is that your feet will go down into a tunnel. Now for some people that can be a bit of an issue I have to say with similar layouts I've found it an issue in the past with club suites a little bit less but it's just one thing to be aware of as part of this seat's general layout and design. After some rest, it was then a good time for me to get down to the club kitchen so I can show you what's in store just here. Overall, a really good selection of various different snacks, drinks, sandwiches, yogurts, fruit pots, you name it, it was all there. Particularly on a flight of this length, I could imagine a number of people getting quite hungry between services, so it would be nice to have somewhere to pop on down to, so do be aware of that if you're flying in business class with BA. I was actually saving room on that particular morning for the breakfast service, so I could bring that to you. This all kicked off with a little bit of a starter. It was to be a fresh fruit salad on that particular day, and also a couple of other offerings just there. In terms of the croissant, and then also the overnight oats as well. As I was then enjoying some fantastic views down over South Korea as we made our way over Seoul, I then tucked in to the full English breakfast, which was to be my main menu choice on that particular day. I must say it was one of the best breakfasts I've ever had with any airline in any class. It went down really very nicely indeed. Alongside the breakfast service was then a selection of juices. I also opted for a cup of tea, so you had your full range of different hot drinks just there available to you as well. Sadly, on that particular day into Tokyo's Hanaida, it was to be forecast a very cloudy arrival, so nothing too sunny to bring you. But it's now time to wrap up and give you my thoughts for what I think on this very lengthy club suite experience with British Airways. Overall, it was good. Actually, in fact, it was pretty damn good. 
this was a really nice combination of British Airways for the first time for me since COVID twinning together a fantastic new hard product on board with absolutely brilliant service. I have to say the crew that were looking after me on that particular day were some of the best I've ever experienced across British Airways and they were a huge credit to the airline. Just goes to show that when BA can finally combine a really good hard product with a decent soft product offering, they can achieve really fantastic things. A couple of little areas to improve on, I think adding a couple of extra crew, particularly for the high density of premium seats, would be a good thing to look at. And also little upgrades just to the small touches, be it salt and pepper shakers or the quality of the bathrooms. But overall, very good indeed. If you're thinking of flying British Airways for an upcoming trip, but would like to look at a slightly cheaper option, you can check out my recent review of their premium economy in the bottom left just now. Otherwise, really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, drop it a thumbs up and looking forward to welcoming you to another one real soon.